I like uh, to share with you one of the cases that I did in Los Angeles with the USC, actually with Dr. Jean Ho Park, in aesthetic rehabilitation and missing congenital laterals. Uh, we had the patient that show up in the dental office that he wanted to have his redefinition on his smile, and he basically he wanted to close the diastema between the two cent the two upper centrals. The canines has to become laterals, and the first bicusp became labially canines. So we started with a virtual design, but uh, virtual design is only an indication because we have to stay in the configuration, especially if the patient doesn't need a periodontical treatment. So it's very, very important to stay in the anatomical configuration of the tooth because we have to move this configuration in the walks up and the mock up later. We started the, the, the profile, how is the emergency profile, how much we can make longer also uh, the teeth. Our challenge was that we have to prep the teeth, we have don't prep the teeth, and the teeth that has to be prepped, in which way we can prep, especially when the canines has to become laterals. So we started to see some measurements, some analysis of the case, um, taking the measurements between the mesial and the distal and the distal area, especially of the canines, because these canines has to become laterals. The canines were very, very prominent and very, very labially inclination. First of all, after the diagnostic approach that is in the laboratory, we developed the model work, we started with the walks up, and after that, we want to study the parameters, how they can, the parameters can change. Do we have to prep the two centrals? How much do we have to prep the two canines? And which way we have to prep the two premolars, the two first premolars to become in the future two canines. For sure, we need an aggressive preparation on the two canines. The sites that we have in the natural, a lateral is mesial distal 5 millimeters and the canine is mesial distal 7 millimeters. So we take in consideration also the buccal uh, size and volume of the tooth. We have seven millimeters uh, the lateral and nine millimeters uh, uh, the canine. But this is not very, very important for uh, the final result of the prosthesis of the rehabilitation in the mouth with the veneers um, because we have to play more uh, with the labial area since they are veneers. So in the laboratory, we started to study. We want to study in the beginning in the laboratory. After the two diagnostic impressions, we developed the two diagnostic model work. We took some sides of the tooth, and we know that from nine millimeters, we have to put on seven millimeters on mesial distal. So after the wax up, we made some silicon key. This silicon key, we have two kinds of silicon key. We have labial and palatal incisal. With the palatal incisal, we want to check the spaces, the length of the tooth, and in which way we can manage the perimeter of the tooth in its anatomical configuration. So the, the first problem, especially labially, we didn't have the silicon key that, that matched very well on the model work because of the prominence of the two canines. So this is, it means that we need an aggressive preparation, especially facially. And this is what we started in the laboratory. If we made a mistake in the laboratory, it's not a problem. We can trash the model work and we restart it again. But if we can make a mistake in the mouth, it's a biological damage. And there is nothing to repair, nothing to fix it, and it's going to be a very, very big issue for for the patient in its biology in his biological aspect so we started our first prep on the model work we check with the silica with the section the silica key that they're coming from uh, the walks up and what we saw at that we need a one millimeter inner preparation especially facially and this is very difficult to fee to do physiologically because uh, the dentist wanted to stay in the enamel, and he told me maybe there is a good chance for 0.7 millimeters, but one millimeter, I don't want to touch the dentist. I'd like to stay in enamel. And I said, so that's okay. We can go with that. 
uh, I'm, I'm going to mix some ceramic powder and to make more natural to maintain the translucency and to manage the value of the tooth in that area. So this is what we did in the beginning in the laboratory. We moved. We need an aggressive preparation, not only facially, but only distally and measurely, because we want to reduce the size of the canine. So we use different bars. We use also a disc. But what is important is that once we decide that we have to cut one millimeter, one millimeter, uh, mesial and distal, we don't have to leave the finish line on the original size of the canine but we need to stay inner more towards the middle of the tooth because we need the suitable emergent profile. If this one is going to be physiologically possible, we have to do it. If not, we do cannot get the aesthetic final result. If it's not possible, one millimeter, 0 0.7, 0 0.6 is always helpful to get the suitable anatomy of the tooth. In this mesial and distal configuration, we don't need a chamfer. If we can have a light chamfer, it's okay. But if not, we have to, to go with a vertical preparation, with a vertical finish line. With the silicon key, we check finally how much spaces do we need to get the final result in ceramic. And here we check once again how much space we have facially, measly, and distally from a different point of view. This is a very interesting step to do it in the laboratory because we can help, we can support the, the dentist how to do directly in the mouth. And regarding the two centrals, we don't need a preparation. We can go with no prep veneers. Maybe we need a little prep incisally because we need the part of the ceramic incisally, at least one millimeter for the strength of the veneers at the end of the work. After we did our preparation, now it's important since the canine is very, very bulky in its cervical facial configuration, we need a flat configuration over there. We need a flat emergency profile. So what we needed is a bevel. From the chamfer, we go to a bevel. This bevel doesn't have to be covered there. It has to be free no covered by ceramic. We have to stay in the enamel. It's a very, very light bevel because here we have we, we would like to have a flat emergence emergence profile very close to the lateral. And on the centrals, we don't need an, a prep veneers over there. We don't want to touch the tooth. We want to stay in the enamel. Enamel is a marvelous material, is a, a fantastic um, back, um, background how to start to lay your ceramic on top. So we need only size at 0 0.2 millimeter. We check always everything. It's accurate, but because we have to check what we did with the wax up, we're gonna go. We want to go step by step with um, with the technical procedures to do the final step at the end in the mouth. And this is all the clinical support. We have silicon key for preparation. We have silicon key for space that the dentist can cut vertically and horizontally. And we have the palatal incisal to see the length of the teeth. It's important for the prep. Also, the silicon key of the prep is going to go put it in the mouth and then he can check what the laboratory did and to stay in the same size. This is the lab preparation, the final of the lab preparation. And then we went with the provisionals. It's a shell provisional that we made um, a lingual stop because we don't we don't want to have distortion distortion of the provisional. The same position that we have on the model work, we would like to have it in the mouth. So let's say that this is a kind of step that it's precision in position. So the same position that we have on the model work, the same. Um, steps that the laboratory did in his facility, we want to share and same on the and stay on the same wavelength when we we move to the dental office. So the second part of this case, I'm gonna show you later in this in um, in a, in a second presentation. This is the first step until the provisional. So I really thank you for your attention, and I invite you to follow the second part of the presentation. Thank you, and have a good day.